What's up, pals? This is John Fitzgerald. I'm going to answer your guys' questions. Thank you, everyone, for asking, and we'll get to it. So, Monkey McPot asks, was all your Cold War footage in that pawn shop edit, or is there more unseen footage from that time? Uh, yeah, pretty much all that footage was zero footage that I was like filming and stuff happened where I quit and then uh, had all that footage on a hard drive, just like a low res, and I used it for the shop. It didn't go over well, but there definitely is more footage that I didn't get for sure, but it's whatever. I don't even know what it is or whatnot. Yeah, it's not even really worth it. That's what I felt like I could use the footage because it was like, I don't know, I did the skating. <laughs> so, but it was sketchy. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, you half cabbed over the rail at Crenshaw? Yes. I half cabbed like over the back filming for propeller with Greg, but it didn't look as cool as I thought it would. Yeah, it's just, I don't like the way it looks. It doesn't even look that rad. Like, it's not that cool. Uh, tell us that drain ditch story where you were, where you and the crew were almost arrested. So Leica was doing some thing on Greg Hunt, basically like a day in a life or like showing how he works and everything. And we went to this one full pipe spot that was in Orange County and it was like off a toll road, like off a freeway. And we had like all these bags and camera gear we were there for probably like 30 minutes or so. And all of a sudden, like a helicopter is just like hovering right above us. And we're just like, oh, we should probably get out of here. So we just started throwing up all the bags. Like you had to climb in the ditch and then you had to like throw all the bags up. And so we're like getting all the gear up. And as we're like doing that, like five cop cars just come storming in, all come out, guns drawn at us and pretty much everyone like we had to get face down on like the ground and everyone got up one by one had to like do the whole ordeal yeah like the lift your shirt and then you like turn around and then you see like 10 cops like pointing guns at you and then they all threw us in the back of the car and realized that we were just skaters but uh i guess like cartel was running drugs through those tunnels and so they're like yeah, it would just looked sketchy. So they were like, they just freaked out. How often do you visit the boards even lurk? Not too often, but I'll go on every now and then just to like check them out. Some of the stuff's pretty funny. No, I don't have an account, but I'll just like lurk, see some like funny stuff. Like if there's something that, I actually, there's one thread I thought was pretty funny. It was like, yes, yes, no. Where it's just like, yeah, that one was pretty good. Had some zingers on there. Ever keep in touch anyone from one in a million? Uh, not too much. Saw, I would see Ruben and stuff, like, randomly. Yeah, he was in SD. And, yeah, and then Nick, obviously, I like hanging out with him recently. Or I saw him in New York maybe two years ago, year and a half. But he's on hockey, so I'm going to start going on trips and stuff, which is sick. Hey John, big fan since zero days. Are you trying to steal knee surgery trophy from Dustin Dolan or is it just shit luck? I don't want that trophy, first of all. And that dude has like nine knee surgeries. Yeah, I heard they just like, they gave up and like took it out completely. Yeah, bad luck. Yeah, I had five knee surgeries so far. What's the most you've eaten in a day? Is it a bitch to skate after a fat meal or are you one of those types that doesn't even phase you? I don't even know. I could punch down a lot of food. Yeah, like, I've... Someone bet me if I could eat, like, a whole... It was like a meat lover's pizza and Ollie a table. I almost did it. I didn't do it. But I did eat a whole pizza and try to Ollie a table before. It took me two tries. Does surfing help your skating get back to normal post-surgery? Yeah, the salt water and everything is good for your knee. I haven't been surfing lately. I went out one time, but it was like, for the most part, it's kind of sketchy just because like the waves will move your leg 
like if it crashes on your leg like i've felt my yeah i felt my leg jolt which kind of like freaked me out but i'll go swimming in the ocean and salt water cold salt water is good for you behavioral guide asks boxing stories not really too much no i box i was going to cm boxing stables and valverde and azusa pretty standard just go in there and like yeah punch bags and like started sparring actually like second time i ever sparred because no one is like as big as me in that gym <laughs> there's like no heavyweights yeah it's just like a bunch of like smaller or there's like a couple dudes that are my weight but they're like five five whatever the boxing coach was like hey he's like i have a heavyweight for you he's like you're gonna spar him tomorrow and i was just like all right who is this dude and he showed me a photo and he's like this big ass dude like holding a trophy and i was like all right rad and then yeah he tuned me up pretty good actually i ate like 20 right hands the bridge of your nose like those dudes are full-blown like athletes and they take insane amount of punt like sparring whatever is like big gloves you wear like headgear and everything and your head is literally pounding like the next day like my the bridge of my nose is all sore like tender to the touch kind of, i guess they say you get used to it after a while but i don't know i hate julio what's the most amount of boards you've broken in a single session probably six seven yeah some days are just worse than others like it just depends on the spot but sometimes i'll bring like an arsenal boards like five boards with me i've ran through my whole arsenal boards and then had to use like other people's boards and i snapped theirs i've actually done a couple of tricks where it was on like a super small board and it like scared the shit out of me because like i thought i was gonna like ollie north onto a rail and just like rack it yeah, it worked out, actually. Uh, what trick is the most underappreciated in all of skateboarding? Probably ollie. I like a good ollie. Currently, I like Sage, his ollie. He's got like a snappy one. It's crazy to watch in person, actually. Adam Abbas asks, please give us a good Ave story. I heard he has a maniacal laugh. Uh, let's see. We're skating this one spot. Out, uh and there's like a taxi cab parked right in front of it. We we're just like waiting to see if the dude would move and like he didn't, no sign of him or anything. And then it was like, I'm gonna call this dude. And he calls the, up that ta like the number on the taxi and is just like, hey, hey, your car's getting towed. Like you better come out here and like move this shit real quick. And we we're just sitting in the car, like kind of just like giggling and shit. And then all of a sudden we look out the window and there's like some dude in just sweats and a wife beater just like running out to the street. And like, uh, he was just like on the phone with him still. And the dude's like freaking out, like looking at his cab, like throwing his arms up. And we're just like sitting in the car dying. Did he end up moving the car? No, he didn't move the car. <laughs> yeah, it was just like after that, he just like hung up and we we're all just laughing. But he's funny, man. He's like actually a really funny dude in person. You have any hesitations about riding for hockey in the beginning? No, I was, thought it was sick right away. I think the beginning was like kind of meant to be like that. And then, uh, yeah, as it went on, we just like it was better to have more dudes. Not real. They kind of just kept it up for like Donovan and I at first. And I think Andrew was like, there's talk about Andrew. Yeah, once everything got rolling, which I'm, it's sick. Like just to see how it started and where it went. It's like, I don't know. It's kind of rad to just be a part of it from the get go. Uh, you were studying art in school. Did you find it useful? No, I didn't. School's good for some people. I think, and it's like, I don't know, I was never that kind of guy that was like, did well in school. I always was, my mind was just elsewhere. If I were to do anything with like drawing or whatever, it'd be on my own, I guess. Yeah, I mean, people like tune in their skills or like figure out how to like get into the industry or like work in the industry through school. Uh, I've actually had 
couple or a drawing on one of my boards. It was like this, some kid sitting outside of like a, a white picket fence. And there's like the family in the background. And he had like a jacket on that had a drawing I had on the back of the jacket. I just like do it for fun. It's actually hard for me to just sit down and draw lately. It's on and off. What practices do you think are beneficial for better mental health? I'd say eating healthy, exercising, breath work, basically having like hope, faith that stuff's gonna get better eventually. NDSR asks, that front 5-0 on the bank to wall in Portland near Nike was, Nike Park was impeccable. Any tips for developing a superhuman push? Yeah, putting your, you need a stabilizer. So put that hand on your knee. Yeah, long strides. <laughs> Don't go like short. Booznitz has a sick push. His, that's like an exception. There's some dudes where you're just like, it doesn't really work out that well, but Booznitz is sick. Low calcium asks, five guys in and out or Shake Shack in and out. Favorite Neil Young album, Harvest Moon. Favorite Trans World video, Sight Unseen. Cuban Lynx asks, what's your weirdest Forrest Edwards story? Anything you feel was misleading about him in the final show? He was just a different dude. <laughs> it's just like, it's all I can just, yeah, one of a kind. Weird story. He was... He would sleep on the couch, yeah, but he would like sleep face down on like the park couch, which I thought was pretty rugged because that thing is so fart crusted. Uh, who is your favorite one in a million alumni? Nick Sting. Recommendations for best ways to recover from knee surgeries. One, let it heal, do your physical therapy, and eat better, like eat healthier. Johnny Sheen asks, do you feel you have skated bigger stuff being so tall? Always hyped to see your footage. Keep going, dude. So yeah, some, like, skating taller stuff actually does feel a little bit more comfortable. Like, if you put me on a small ledge, like, it's, uh, you probably see me, like, fall fucking really hard. Well, like, yeah, curves and stuff, but, I mean, if I were to ollie to it, it's, like, the worst feeling ever, like... I like a little bit of height on like ledges and everything. Even like taller rails feel better. Uh, Meekin asks, do you like Cheez-Its? Uh, yeah, I do. I actually just had a Cheez-It for like the first time in like years. And I was like, damn, these things are good. <laughs> Honey Island asks, how much does it trip you out that this kid in the photo has grown up to be an amazing skateboarder and is now getting boards from hockey? And it's a photo of me and Little Joe. Yeah, Little Joe rips. He's always ripped. And it's actually, it's rad to see him, like, start, like, him skating street and stuff. Because he's always, like, torn, transitions, everything. He's, he's, like, getting really good. And is it true your meniscus was torn after surgery to get it fixed? And when you went to get surgery again... They opened it and gunk shot across the room. Would you ever recommend surgery at this point? After my first surgery, I think I was like eight months in and my knee was like killing me and I was still skating on it. I think I just thought like that's the way it is. Like your knee just hurts after surgery. And I went to the doctor and he was like, oh, your meniscus is torn. And so I was like, all right, well, I need to get that taken out. And... I had my surgery date and he like opened my knee up and like pus and all this stuff shot out of my knee and my knee was like infected like after that first surgery and that's why it was like so painful and stuff and I was getting like really sick every two weeks and it was that was going on for like months yeah it was because I had like septic in my knee and it like got into my bloodstream I was getting like infections like in my throat and they thought like I would go to the doctor and I usually never go to the doctor but I was like basically getting like deathly ill they would swab my throat and be like it's not strep throat and I'd be like all right 
well, what is it? And they just like sent me home and didn't tell me anything and like get sick again two weeks later. And it was like the same thing over and over until basically I had the knee surgery. And after that, I was good. Just the infection would fuck up your whole body. Yeah, if, if you have an infection in your like joints or whatever, and it gets bad, like it was staph infection and that stuff is like lethal if you leave it like let it be so i don't know it wasn't fun for a while and uh why is roy jones jr better than mike tyson he's just gnarly or mike tyson's gnarly but roy jones jr at super middleweight was the best how many times did you go back for this there's a reason why i don't think anyone has skated it since it's absolutely fucked. It's that rail. It's in La Cunada. That was just one day of like four hours of suffering. And there's a curb cut at the bottom. And I would literally like board slide the rail and land and land on the upside of the curb cut. And it would just smash me into the pavement. And I was like doing that for four hours straight. And then one just went. And I think someone did skate it after me. I think I saw Zion or he grinded it. Shanamel asks, would you rather share a room or share a hotel room with Dill or Ave? Ave, Dill doesn't sleep really. He like stays up late. I'm on like an old man schedule. Anthony is like, four, like yeah, we're, yeah, we're in bed by like 10, mellow. Who's this? Sheem asks, favorite spots you've skated in SGV? I always end up going back to like that hospital. It's like that seven stair out ledge in Glendora. It's just probably one of my go-to spots. Uh, you completely skipped over it in Van's interview, but talk about the clip and the life splicing where you front board a rail in front of a Starline bus. That was, I think the rail off sunset like in hollywood and that was actually the rail that i used uh i broke all my boards and i used abe's board and it was like a smaller like literally the length was smaller and the width was small like an eight two five by and then the the actual like yeah wheelbase was smaller and i i just like was getting close and I was like, all right, well, I ain't gonna like basically stop trying this. And the Starline bus just happened to be there. Yeah. And I, I don't even know, I kind of tuned it all out. That one was sketchy because you could feel it like go in and when you hit a post, it would go in and up. And then like, it's like a roller coaster the whole way down. Do you still have the nipple piercings? No, I took those bad dogs out the day I had to. They would get caught on like the, yeah, my shirt and just like when I was sleeping in the hotel, like on the sheets and stuff, it was like the worst. I was so bummed. Funny story too is uh, we're at some, I think it was the elementary school where it had like a double kink rail in New Mexico and I couldn't have a shirt and I had my nipples pierced and I was at the school and like some teacher came out was like, yo, you gotta leave. Like you can't be at this school right now. I think it was, they're trying to skate a kink rail. Like the teacher was like, he can't be here. So I was like, I went and like sat in the van while everyone skated the school. I just looked like a freak. Hannah Scheigla says, my dad's hometown is Temple City and used to go a lot to visit my grandma. Everyone knows that you're from the greater San Gabriel Valley, but I remember hearing that you're specifically from TC. Any favorite Temple City spots? On the side note, did you ever go to Apple Farm Skate Shop? Or is that before your time? That's like some, someone dug for that one. Uh, I did live in Temple City. I didn't grow up there, but I lived there from like eight to 11, like three, two, three years. And no, I don't have any Temple City skate spots. And yes, I actually went to Apple Farm. 
says also, do you hike San Gabriel Mountains? As an avid hiker, it's got some of my favorite trails and spots in Southern California. Ever go to Fish Canyon Falls in Doherty before the fires shut it down? Yeah, I've been all over those mountains. I haven't been in a while. I was actually kind of like thinking about it recently. One of my favorites is Bridge to Nowhere. Uh, what's your current setup? Any weird things you do? Current setup, I have K-Rods board, 8.5, uh, Thunder, what is it, 151s? I don't even know the size, just like the bigger trucks that fit 8.5. Spitfire wheels, wide cut. Yeah, they're like the FA Spitfire. I don't know, I just grabbed them at the warehouse. I don't really, I don't trip on like, I just basically ride the basic, like I don't have a shape or anything. I just grab boards and I'm pretty much not good enough to know the difference. Uh, worst person to share room with is Cody Green. The dude snores like an animal, but he's also, I'd say he's the best person to room with too, because he's just funny. Uh, what is your current music rotation? Van Morrison, Jimmy Cliff, and Fleetwood Mac been on those ones a lot lately and meat puppets too figure it out first comical dill story that comes to mind i actually haven't seen him in a bit yeah he's just a funny dude he makes you cry laughing so hard like just telling like stories or whatever like just yeah the way he tells it how he would like break his arm and then like make everyone in the van laugh like on the way to the hospital the dude was like, his arm is just out of place and like still cracking jokes. Just like keeping everyone calm. Yeah, Dill's rad. Fond memory you might have spent with Dylan. I was always kind of starstruck by that dude just cause he, like after that Gravis part, he was my favorite. We both were like quiet and we'd both like basically be comfortable with just like, just hanging out and not really even saying Same like, person. yeah, saying much, but he paid for me to do an eating challenge in Ohio one time on a workshop trip, like eating, I don't even know how many, it was like grilled cheese donuts, fucking the worst things ever. Like I had eaten like two sandwiches before that, after, like before eat, doing the eating challenge. And I think I got like one or two away and I puked. It was rad just even being there, like going on trips with that dude. He was just the best. And who's your biggest inspiration in skating? Right now, Avon guy, he's always skating. Like he doesn't stop. Those two dudes are just inspirational. What were the main videos you watched while growing up? My first video was photosynthesis. That, I had Mosaic, Yeah Right, uh, Dying to Live, what I, like four in ones and stuff when they were coming out. Double Steve Burger. Hey John, how are you feeling? Would you rather pee out a marble or poop out a softball? I'm gonna go with the marble. Really? Yeah, I don't. I ain't gonna deal with that. <laughs> Has anyone chosen a softball? Everyone chooses a softball. Really? <laughs> yeah. Sure, I wouldn't. But those things are sharp. A marble is like smooth. If <laughs> whatever, I don't. Even, I've had a catheter put in once and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Still sucked. Michelle Obama asks, will Hockey FA put out a full length? Uh, we will put out what we put out. Not Mike Rusix. Uh, how'd it come about you leaving Vans right before Propeller? Are you still on good terms with Greg Hunt? Any plans for life after skating? or is there anything doing outside of skating right now? I left Vans right before Propeller just because I couldn't financially skate and uh, live. It came like I had some personal like family stuff go on and it came to a point where it was just like, I'm either skating or I'm not, or just gonna work full time somewhere. And yeah, it was kind of a shitty situation, but it worked out for the best. Like, I'm still here, which I'm thankful, grateful to be here. And, yeah, I still see Greg time to time. He's one of my favorite filmers. 
life after skating, figure it out when I get there. Anything doing outside of skating, boxing, that old chestnut. Machu asks, what's your favorite flat ground trick and also least favorite? I like doing 360 flips, but I'm not good at them. So that's probably like my favorite and least favorite trick. Because when I do do a good one, I'm just like, wow, that felt pretty, pretty good. Last skate video that got you hyped, that Michael Rodriguez skate video with like Joe, Seven, a couple other dudes had really rad parts. Yeah, those dudes brought the heat. Who's that? Who's it? Horses asks, uh, favorite hockey graphic? Uh, they're all good. Like Benny kills it with that. He does pretty much all of it. There's like this dude, Hayden, that is helping out and everything. And Dill like does a lot, some stuff too. But for the most part, Benny is like, just constantly grinding at it. Top three favorite movies, Apocalypse Now, Godfather, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Jay Soy, who's your favorite big skater? Brian Anderson and Ben Schroeder. Who's your favorite little skater? <laughs> little Joe. Fred Gelsotti asks, if you could put one person on hockey, who would it be? And that would be Guy Mariano. What's the scariest trick you've ever tried? Actually, that half cap board slide, I think, in the life splicing, I think it was the last trick. I just remembered not being ready to actually like do the whole thing and then I was like literally in the middle of the rail and it was like all right well I guess I have to and my heart like dropped mid mid rail and I like did that one so I was like all right I'll take it how do you feel about how they butchered the last one in a million ours just worked I think cuz they they didn't really know what they're doing and I think they tried to like they tried too hard. force it and it just didn't work Alan asks, first off, big fans, since we were all foaming at the mouth waiting for your next episode of One in a Million ten years ago, I just made myself feel old, so my apologies. I know, I'm old. It's weird. Uh, I was just talking about overcoming mental barrier of returning to skating after injuries with a friend, and after having so many knee surgeries, do you have any secrets in regards to recovering after injuries, surgeries? If you do the work and get your knees strong and like get your mobility and everything, it's all mental. The first few of them, I was kind of like really depressed. I was drinking heavily, like just not taking care of myself as I should have been. It tore right away. Yeah, it made it worse. and. It took me a couple to like actually take it like a lot more serious and everything. So don't drink and don't smoke. Yeah, while you're recovering. Donovan's calling me. Put him on blast right now. Yeah, I'll call him back. Okay, funeral tuxedo. Hey John, you once posted on your Instagram about having mental health issues and receiving help from professionals if you're comfortable elaborating on that part of your life, would you please tell us a bit about it? Yeah, it was 2017. I was like diagnosed with bipolar and I wasn't the one who went to go get help. I was pretty much just dropped off at a psych ward and I was literally like out of my head and I didn't like being there and I still don't think those places are like they treat people the best, but that kind of saved my life because I have to work with like chemical imbalancements and it's like stuff that goes on. Like luckily I can, I got back on my feet from that and everything because a lot of people just like go off into the abyss and that's like scary. But getting professional help, whatever, it saved my life because who knows what I would have done or like where I'd be if I hadn't basically known. Please tell us a Benny Maglinau story. Benny, for the step hop, he was like the first person really doing them. He taught it to Kevin Curtis. 
Yeah, he taught it to Kevin. And I remember him, like, we're at Third and Army, and he was, like, doing step hop to, like, grinds and stuff on the ledges. And he was, like, the first person I've ever seen do that. I don't even know if anyone, like, knew that he was doing that. Yeah, he was just, like, Benny's a really rad skater, too. Keep on chuglin'. I remember watching your attempts to hit Keysar triple set and heard you went back to 188. Is that true? And if so, did the footage ever come of it? That was so long ago. I can't even remember. I went to, I did 188. I don't remember if I did it or not or got kicked out. Yeah, like I went there and I was like 180ing it. Uh, yeah, I did the Ollie. I don't know why. I didn't do the 180. I remember like coming, like basically sticking the 180 and everything, but I can't remember if I, I don't think I did it. Yeah, just front 180. I think I wanted to actually kickflip it and just never went back and did it. And that thing is like insanely big. Um, boxing wise, while not my favorite, do you consider Mayweather to be the GOAT? No. He does have some of the best defense ever. But, like, Julio Cesar Chavez went, like, 80-something and 0 and, like, was fighting still. And Floyd kind of just, like, went 50 and 0 and then stopped to, like, hold that. It's kind of playing it safe. I like it when dudes, like, actually put themselves out there. And Julio Cesar Chavez is a badass. Well, that's it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, pals, for submitting questions. Uh, yeah. That real live shit.